One month ago, I created this account, my Varlamor Locked Hardcore Iron Man. In the last episode, we obtained Sulfur Blades, which is our best in slot training weapon until the point where we are strong enough to defeat Perilous Moons. The goal for this episode? Improving the combat stats significantly in order to be strong enough to defeat all three moons, but also prepare the account for future updates that are coming very soon to Varlamor. We will start this episode off with a little bit of smithing. I got a bunch of supplies left over from the Sulfur Blades grind and all of these bars will be turned into arrows so I can AFK my range XP. 10 smithing. It is time for me to start stacking up on a lot of ore so I can create a lot of arrows and what better way to do that than to AFK some Nagwas. Another pair of blades and we can be alking these for about 18k a pop so it's not the worst drop to get. Another blades. Boosted rates. Trip completed for a lot of chaos runes. And three blades. 14 smithing. Good morning. Here is 68 mining. Book as well, you guys already know the drill, started on zero agility XP and we're only putting all the lamps in agility, 15 more XP, we're now up to 30 experience, getting about 78k XP per hour whilst also banking very decent skills, I should not run out of prayer though. There it is, there's 63 defense, let's get out of here, I trolled with my prayer a little bit. But look at this loot, I mean, I'll be able to make steel bars, iron bars, even bronze bars with these. So, let's train a little bit of smithing and let's make a bunch of arrows and actually begin our range training grind. But before we continue, I would love to tell you more about the sponsor of today's video, Bud.dev. This is honestly one of the coolest sponsors that we've ever had on the channel. Bud.dev's mission is to simply teach you programming. They focus on the backend development and they use Python and Go programming languages. But the reason why they're so cool is they pretty much make learning how to code super fun and competitive. As you are learning, you'll be gaining XP, levels, achievements, and you'll also be completing quests. And if you want, you can also fight to be on the global leaderboards. Our friends over at the boot.dev believe that the smartest way to learn how to code is to make sure you're never bored. So because of that, they created this really cool online self-paced platform that basically basically feels like a captivating RPG game. The platform is designed to get you writing a ton of code because getting your hands on the keyboard and actually shipping projects is basically the only way to really learn. And since they never want you to feel like you're spending money on something that isn't actually helping you, they're also offering you a 30 day no questions asked refund policy, but also a free demo of basically every course and its interactive features. So if you want to learn how to code, maybe challenge yourself a little bit as well, make sure to click the link in the description and use my code MikaRS, you're gonna get 25% off your first payment, that can be 25% off your first month or your first year depending on your subscription. Honestly, I'm really excited to learn how to code and hopefully some of you guys join me along the way. Once again, massive thank you to boot.dev for sponsoring the channel and let's continue on with the video. And here is 15 smithing, I can now take care of all of the iron ores that I got, I might be super hitting them to prevent losing them to be honest. And here is 51 magic. With my mind bomb boost, I can now teleport to a city. It's something we've actually been actively working towards. I feel like an absolute genius right now. I opened my bird nests, got a ruby ring. We're gonna enchant the ruby ring. And now I'm gonna manually craft the rest because I'm completely out of money and out of nature runes. But this is, uh, I feel so smart right now. Here is 20 smithing. We can now make iron arrowheads. 30 smithing. I had to lose a couple of ores, but that's fine because now we can make steel bars. Alright, ladies, gentlemen, we have two goals right now. The first goal is to obtain 53 magic. With that, we are then able to, well, not need wizard mind bobs in order to teleport to the center of the town. And then the second goal is to just get range level as high up as possible. We need to get it to 60 in order to equip mixed hides. But this is my best range gear. It is absolute disaster. I do want to test this out. I've never teleported to this place before. Where does it put me? That is a good spawn right next to the travel, very close to the bank as well. I like this. That's solid. Fletching is gonna be a big part. I'm gonna probably need like 20,000 arrows, if not more, to just AFK this range up. So here's level 46 Fletching. Up to 20 ranged. I very quickly trained just a little bit of thieving to get some coins and I'm over here in the fishing shop in order to buy some feathers. I'm gonna be able to attach these feathers on these million arrow shafts that I fletched to make more headless arrows and then I'll attach my arrow tips to those headless arrows in order to be able to AFK a bunch of range 
currently getting majestic 13k XP per hour with up to 31 range, 47 fletching, and I'm just trying to make a little bit more money to get a little bit more air runes to finish off a little bit more magic XP. All right, finally, there is 53 magic. I can now teleport directly to the city. Actually, I can't, I need one more. Well, that's slightly unfortunate, but I've also been fletching in the meantime. And there's 48 fletching as well. I got nearly 3000 arrows, which should be enough to AFK more range. Now this time, I will not miss it. 54 magic. I can now teleport to the city finally. It is very early and I got a mystery box and I got a casket and I got an emerald. And I've also used all of my arrows and we are now 44 range. Another Leo and we are actually getting lamps from leo random events now we will use this on agility 10 experience currently just enjoying afking on sand crabs i'm getting approximately 45k xp an hour but with this level 77 strength we are now 1000 total level i do like the idea of sand crabs when i'm like really afking but at this point on i'm just trying to get as much strength xp as possible yet another school random event everything into agility that's 15 xp 28 XP to level 2. 80 strength. Today has been a super chill AFK day. This is a massive level for the account. We are almost 90 combat as well. Maze random event. Getting a bunch of arrows would probably be the best thing that we can get right now. There we go, 76%. And we got 278 chaos runes, coins and coins. Honestly, 5k coins is not ideal. So this one flopped a little bit. As you can see in the chat, I just got 64 defense and there it is, 81 strength to top it off. Combat level is also up to 90 right now so we're looking absolutely sick and i do plan on training a little bit strength and then maybe a little bit more defense we'll see let's put this very quickly on agility 10 experience two lamps away from level two good morning here is level 82 strength but also 91 combat and i'm still fully enjoying crabs beautiful nagwa session every inventory takes approximately 30 minutes for me to complete and we get a ton of runes, but most importantly, these ores. A very long editing session after we are now level 70 defense. I went all the way from 60 to 70, and we also went, I think, from like 81 to 84 strength. I just want to beef the character up a bit, because one of the next things we're going to do is obviously the perilous moons, and I want to be as beefy as I possibly can be before I commit to that grind. And I think I'll actually go further than 70 defense. Obviously, my gear is lacking. We're only wearing adamant, so defense levels are quite crucial but we've also gotten this lamp we're putting on the agility we are now one lamp away from level two good morning we got a lamp so that means agility xp and we are now level two agility my afk session is coming to a close there is 73 defense almost 95 combat the very next goal we got is to actually start training crafting a little bit and you may be wondering why would this dude start training crafting all of a sudden the main reason is this diamond ring right now i never really have a good ring to use aside from diamond ring and ring of recoil those are my two best options when it comes to rings and diamond ring can then be enchanted into ring of life which is my only method of survival if my game were to crash or if I were to disconnect at any point of the account. Let's teleport to the city and first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna chisel down all of these uncuts that I've collected. Taking a look at the bank state at the moment, we got a bunch of diamonds, emeralds, rubies and sapphires, which is actually beautiful. Cosmics also aren't a problem. We got 50 of those, so we're chilling when it comes to that. But there's also a charter ship right here, so I should be able to train crafting just with a little bit of money regardless. On the eastern side of town, there's also Artima. I can trade her in order to get a bunch of things. We're gonna need a ring mold, we're gonna need a necklace mold, amulet mold, bracelet mold, tiara mold, buy a little bit of this just so I have a little bit of everything in my bank at the moment. Definitely gonna need a glass blowing pipe, not that many though. Starting with a bit of glass blowing, the process is very simple. We are buying buckets of sand and soda ash just a little bit northwest at the charter ship. We're then running up to the furnace. We make a full inventory of molten glass. We use the glass blowing pipe on the molten glass and make our highest tier in this case oil lamp whilst we're walking back to charters then we sell the buckets sell the oil lamp buy the full inventory again and repeat here's 20 crafting we can now chisel down the sapphires and 23 levels to go 21 22 23 24 25 crafting up to 26 27 crafting we can now make emerald rings but most importantly we can cut emerald as well all the way up to 30 crafting 13 levels to go we are now up to 
33 crafting, meaning that we should now be able to do vials. Vials should give us a little bit more XP than oil lamps used to give. Here's 35 crafting, and I'm now able to cut my rubies. Here's big 40, three more levels to go. Slow and steady wins the race. Here is 43 crafting, meaning we can now create diamond rings, meaning we can now make ourselves a ring of life. However, there is just a small problem. Our smithing level is not high enough. We're gonna need 40 for that. And I do not have a gold bar in my bank, unfortunately. The random event has not given it to me just yet. So, because of that, the next step on the way is to get 40 smithing. Up to 39 smithing, obviously one level off. But what I did not realize is I could just plus one boost my smithing to 40. By speaking to the dude in here, bartender, I can go ahead and buy myself a dwarven stout. And by simply clicking this dwarven stout, boom, 40 smithing. We got a lamp. That's free agility XP, and we also got a full inventory of gold ores. The one ring that could save us if we ever were to DC mid combat. Here it is, making of the diamond ring. Now, we do need to enchant it, and uh, you already know my level not high enough, but with a plus three boost from our little wizard mind bomb, we can now cast it, we can now use it, and we are now a proud owner of a ring of life. Beautiful, that's gonna stay on me probably most of the time. But these recoils, I'm gonna make about 14 right now, not gonna go too excessive on them, and we're gonna be testing those later in the moons as well and now my next plan is actually very simple this range level is 44 when I get it to 60 I can equip mixed hide I just trained smithing through making a bunch of arrow tips let's go turn those into arrows and let's actually go ahead and shoot those at the crabs but first I have to take care of my money situation I'm completely broke I need to buy enough feathers to where I can put about 5,000 bolt tips onto the arrows here's 66 thieving 50 fletching good morning level 50 range and here is also 75 defense. I'm gonna keep pushing defense, maybe look for level 80 or so, just to make sure we are nice and beefy for perilous moons bosses. We got a maze, 75%. A lot of steel arrows, some coins, and some nature runes. Not the best, but that's all right. I'm gonna end here, actually. I have a lamp still. That's going straight into agility. We are now almost level 3, but what I actually wanna do in order to fully prep for perilous moons is I either need to train hunter or fishing and cooking, so the food in the moons actually heals me. Defense is beefed up to 79. I'm sure I'll finish it up to 80 at some point when I feel like it. We'll start off with some fishing. Here's 25, 30 fishing, 35, 40, and the to 45 fishing throughout this time i've also been cooking just about everything i've caught and we're also up to 50 cooking and this should now heal me a lot more once we're finally doing the bosses in perilous moons i'm going to be finishing the day on 50 fishing editing mika here this is probably a good part where i actually explain why i even trained fishing and cooking to begin with the way the food in perilous moons works is it basically goes off of your fishing level and your cooking level or it goes based of your hunter level and your cooking level and when i say that the food can heal you like up to i don't know 25 maybe 30 i honestly don't know but as low as like 5 or 10 if your levels are really low so getting those levels is super important that when we finally reach the point where we are going for those moons the food actually heals me more than i don't know like a 10 fishing good cooking good hunter even better good morning are we beefy enough right now? 80 defense obtained and now there's really only strength to go. I might have spent another day AFK in crabs. Here is level 98 combat. Actually kind of surreal. 87 strength coming in with this one. And as you can see, there's 413k XP away from a level, meaning that if I want to AFK here for about 10 hours, I will get one level to show for it. But now we are definitely getting to the point where perilous moons are doable. So we're just gonna have to grow a pair and start are doing it in this beautiful adamant armor ladies gentlemen there it was it didn't even pop up on the screen i spent 12 hours getting this level there is just something so satisfying about doing other things leaving this account here and letting him train away on the crabs we are now 11 hours away from 89 strength it has been about an entire day since the last clip and i'm still on crabs we're now up to 89 strength but most importantly look in my inventory one lamp two lamps and a book of knowledge now we obviously 
obviously want agility XP and if I use both of the lamps I'm gonna get 40 XP so I'm still not gonna be 3 agility so I think my way to maximize XP here is first of all to kill these crabs and now that the crabs are gone it's actually gonna be better for me to use book of knowledge first so let's go ahead and use this on agility that's gonna be 30 XP and now look how perfect this is gonna be now I'm gonna use the first lamp use it on agility we are now level 3 and now the next lamp that we obviously got is actually gonna give me more XP I'm sure you know just one more day one more day here on the crabs get nice little 90 strength you know it's gonna look good never give a man with too much time a four spawn crab spot we're now up to 91 strength and obviously 100 combat yeah all in Varlamor 17 days 18 hours logged in on this account and here it is 92 strength ladies gentlemen I'm gonna do it it is time to finish perilous moons I've been afking for honestly a little bit too long firstly we got a bunch of lamps obviously we do events whenever we catch them let's go ahead and use those all on agility that's 30 xp right there 30 xp right there and 30 xp right there we're now a proud owner of level 4 agility but also I'm all the way up to 92 strength and nearly 93 honestly I should have spent two more hours and got a 93 but I can't wait any longer I want to do perilous moons I want to get it done I want to see if this little guy in full adamant and sulfur blades and these stats can actually conveniently kill the bosses obviously that's gonna be a huge part of our account so we gotta get it done I'm afraid of dying. AFKing the crabs has been great and all, but one mistake, one disconnection, one crash can literally end my 18 days and 9 hours of progress on this account. But yeah, we got the moths here. That's my one click teleport out. If I were to crash, we still have the ring of life. This is my one way ticket to survive if anything were to happen. My inventory is gonna look a little something like this. A lot of cooked brims and two moonlight potions. In theory, I should probably bring a crush weapon but I don't know if rune mace would actually be better than sulfur blades all right we got a teleport out we got a bunch of food we obviously can't pray protect from melee so we're just gonna be praying the regular prayers and this is it this is the attempt right here again I'm scared and I hope I'm scared for no reason because again this is a lot of hours that I have very shit gear to go into this with but we're gonna commit and we're gonna see how it feels all right let's take a look we're alone the blue moon is arguably the easiest out of the three bosses. She has the unique flat armor stat of minus five, which means that any damage I deal to her, I deal five more damage. That is also one of the reasons why I decided to test my very first attempt with sulfur blades, even though something like a rune mace would have a slightly better attack style against her. She has two very simple special attacks, but out of all the three bosses, I'm the least worried about the blue moon. Okay, let's begin. Oh, so this is gonna, like, hurt. Ooh, this is harder than I thought, actually. DPS is so bad. Now I just need to out DPS here and we're good. Come on, just hit it here. There we go, blue moon down. It was not easy. Let me tell you, it was not easy. We haven't done any, like, mistakes, so to say. But, damn. Okay, this is gonna be a grind, but I'm down for it. Okay, and this is arguably the easiest of the three bosses as well. Time to restock full inventory of supplies and do the boss number two. All right, moving on to the eclipse. Let's take a look how it will feel on this boss. I think there's a cutscene before this one. Yeah, there is. Because obviously we are still in the middle of the quest. Zuma nearly gets cooked. Here we go behind the pillar. Obviously get hit immediately. Lovely. Okay, so this one hurts. Jesus. Why am I hitting like nothing? The Eclipse Moon has a flat armor of 6, which means that every time I hit her, she reduces my max hit by 6. However, I'm using Sulfur Blades, which means that she's basically reducing my max damage by 12 every single time I hit her. So all of a sudden, my max hit is 2 on this boss. And obviously, my dumbass could have done some research and realized this ahead of time. But simply put, Rune Mace is going to be a lot better on this boss than Sulfur blades ever will be okay i guess i do need proper attack styles or i'm cooked here we're gonna need to come in here with the with the mace i think at the end of the day we're gonna be okay dude my max hit is too my guy like relax when i first did this it was impossible to finish this boss during this phase i sure hope they fixed they did okay that's good and lastly the blood moon let's go ahead and uh, see how this goes so we spawn right in the middle of it do a little bit of moving and let's go blood moon the hardest out of the three bosses by a mile 
Gabriel. She has an integrated DPS check mechanic. You see, the boss heals and she heals a lot. It is all based on how much you actually get hit and with our armor being limited to adamant, she hits us a lot. Essentially, if we don't have enough DPS, she will overheal any damage we make and she could in theory be unkillable for us. She also has two special attacks, one of which is very simple, just move around the room, and the other one is fairly self-explanatory as well, you hit the jaguars and you step on the blood pools before any damage is taken. This is attempt number one to see if we have enough DPS to fully take on the blood moon. This boss heals a lot. Deny her healing if you click at the right time like so. Oh, this one's rough. Okay, so use this phase to heal. Dude, it hits me at 20, my guy. Oi, this one's hard. Out of prayer. Oh, that was a good phase. This is rough, guys. I think this is a tab, wow. Okay, so the DPS check is crazy on this one. I'm gonna tab here, not gonna risk it. We're completely out of supplies, out of prayer, out of everything. Okay, this is interesting. The chest is right here, I want it, I wanna improve my gear, man. Round two, here we come. Come on, we're doing good damage here, actually. Just hit here. Ah, it healed full HP. Uh, I got scared to lose a hardcore there, not gonna lie. Okay, well, we either tab or we finish it here, let's see. Unbelievable. I can't risk it. <sighs> oh my, okay, I think I might still be a little bit too weak. So I'm gonna finish 93 strength and probably get a few more attack levels. I think both of this time I could have gotten it. I shouldn't risk it all the way to this low HP. <laughs> Let's heal up quickly actually before we do anything. Damn, this is harder than I thought. This is gonna be a big challenge. Damn. I got rewarded with a dance for my efforts. Oof, I'm, I'm like walk of shaming my way back to sand crabs right now. I really thought the stats would be good enough to do it. I think my next goal is to finish 93 strength and push for I'd say 75 maybe 80 attack and uh, we'll see how good that feels. Let's use this book on agility. That's gonna be plus 60. We are one lamp away from level 5. We finally got all the way up to 93 strength. It is very late at night, so I'm keeping it a bit more low. Good morning. We are now a proud owner of 93 strength and 73 attack. We also got another book of knowledge. We're gonna be using this on agility. 60 experience, we're now level 5 agility, purely through lamping, started on 0 XP. Maze random event, and our total level is much higher now, so we should actually get some good rewards. 77%, nice. 488 stilettos. I I spent the last two days training at the crabs. We're now 93 strength, but also 79 attack, almost 80, 104 combat, but also we have these two lamps from random events. We're gonna put them both in agility. This has to be my favorite way to gain XP. Just use the lamps, get agility XP. We're now level six, that is beautiful. Here we go. Big 80 attack doesn't even pop up, but from here I am pretty much training strength again, I think. Ladies, gentlemen, nearly 500 hours in the making of the account. Account, we are now going to be a proud owner of 94 strength and 105 combat. That is honestly kind of crazy for the account that doesn't leave Varnamore. I'm gonna be honest. Now, all of this is basically the result of me being fairly busy in real life over the last two weeks, but I was able to be logged in pretty much the whole time, getting my passive XP over here on crabs. And that's not all, we also got two lamps. Events have been very generous, we put the first lamp into agility, we are now 7 agility, all through lamping, and we put another lamp into agility, and we are now just one lamp away from level 8, that's beautiful. I feel like I've spent a lot of my time on sand crabs in this episode, but a part of me just wants to feel a little bit stronger because of that encounter with the moons realizing that we're not even that strong yet but we have now achieved 95 strength on our Varlamor locked account how crazy is that 21 days and 7 hours in the making and here we are that is not all okay AFKing for 20 hours at a time which if you look at the XP per hour you look at the XP remaining for the next level we are basically looking at about 20 hours to get a singular level at this point 
point of the account. So a lot of time is spent just chilling AFK in here at the crabs whilst doing other things. And obviously we also get a bunch of random events. We got two more lamps. You guys already know it. Put it in the agility. We are now level eight agility. And we got one more. Might as well put another one in there. We are now two lamps away from level nine agility as well, which is beautiful. But with that, we also got 1,150 total level. They thought it couldn't be done. They said I would never do it. But here it is. Oh me, oh my, 96 strength. What is happening? We also have 106 combat, 1 million XP till 97. Dude, I've been procrastinating this blood moon for, I, I don't really know. It's been too long. It's been weeks, 22 days, 5 hours in the making. But today is gonna be the day I'll finish the damn moon because I do believe we have to be strong enough now, right? We got full adamant, but we got the stats to back it off. I think we're strong enough to defeat the moons. I just have to actually go and do it. I don't know. Um, do I switch to defense here? Do I keep going in strength? Nearly 107 combat, which is kind of ridiculous. We also got this mystery box. This could be a medium clue scroll, but we also got this lamp that we'll put in agility. We are now one lamp away from nine agility, which is sick. I think I'm ready. I'm going to give this another run. I will do this whole run with the ring of recoil equipped and we'll see if that does the difference. So we are risking our account if we ever were to crash, which is such a scary thought, but it has to be done. The inventory is set, teleport out, ring of recoil, and obviously my trusty full adamant. Okay, I think this is a good time to enter. Okay, big DPS, come on. Come on, this is doable. Just big damage here. Preferably, we do not eat during this phase. Come on, big damage. Okay, wasn't perfect, wasn't too bad either. 100 HP to go. Just need big damage here and to tank few hits. I need to eat here. Bro, the healing is crazy. Just need to tank its hits. It's doable here. We can get it done with a bit of luck. I'm risking it so hard right now. Come on. With a good RNG, we can kill it on the next uh, hit. I'm gonna eat to maximum here, and we just hope for RNG to pull through here. This is doable. This hit right here could do it. And this hit could do it. 5 HP. You can not make this shit up. Come on, hit it. Holy mo- we've actually done it. Okay. It can be done. It is hard. It is so hard, but it can be done. Wow. Let's go, man. Ooh, the relief I'm feeling right now. I thought that the DPS check would be maybe too hard for me to go through, but 22 days, 13 hours in the making, and we were able to pass the DPS check. Ladies and gentlemen, let's take a look at what the loot has to offer. Our very first Perilous Moon's chest opening. Oh my god. I actually, over the last week or so, I've really been struggling mentally thinking, is this even doable but if you can get one kill you can get 250 kills and I can get every piece of armor from this place now firstly we're obviously gonna do everything we can to complete the quest but it all starts right here by opening the very first lunar chest what do we get my guy, I killed all of them. Do I need to finish the quest first? Massive amount of Slayer XP, Runecraft XP, Hunter and Fishing. Our quest point is 8, our levels just gone up. 52 Slayer, 26 Runecrafting, 27 Hunter, and there it is, it's done. Good luck us. Boom. No way! Blood Moon Tessets 1KC! Oh my god, there is absolutely no way. There is absolutely no way. This is just too good. This is just too good, man. Oh wait, let me let me let me gather myself a little bit here. Give me a second. Full Blood Moon set is by far the best in slot set I can ever use and we are one step closer with the Blood Moon Tassets, man. This is a complete YouTuber luck out here. If we were to sell this, 4 million, but obviously not. But if we were to wear this, let's take a look at our defense bonus to start it off with. Defense bonus in Slash, much better than Adamant. Magic defense goes up, range defense goes up, stab defense stays a little bit weaker. 
crush defense goes up. So all in all, 100% better than adamant. But I also get two melee strength bonuses, which is huge. And that probably gives me a max hit actually. But most importantly, once I have the full set completed, this is gonna go hard. And there it is, the very first item on the account and what a way to end the episode as always guys if you made it this far please consider giving the video a like this video alone easily took me over 350 hours of gameplay so a simple like a simple comment and a subscription if you're not yet subscribed goes a very long way and lastly don't forget to check out boot.dev they were so kind to sponsor today's video give them some love i genuinely believe that their platform is really really sick catch you guys in a few weeks with another episode have a good one.